Greetings, I'm speaking to you from Kiev, Ukraine, and the topic of today is business entities and which business entity you should choose for your business. So this is a very important topic because the type of business structure you choose for your business will have enormous influence over your conduct of your business because of many different reasons. First of all, for legal reasons, the, t the type of business entity you choose, especially if it's a legal entity, will offer you asset protection and limit your personal liability. Because if you don't register as a legal business entity, then your personal assets and your business assets have no legal separation, which means when you conduct your business and you get sued for your business activities, your personal assets will be at risk and people can go after your personal assets, which is not a good thing. Also, for tax reasons, when you register as a legal business entity, you can take advantage of lower business taxes, especially lower corporate taxes and a lot of other tax benefits. Also, you can get tax after expenses rather than before because if you just conduct your business as a self-employed person without registering your business as a legal entity then you'll be taxed before you spend which will give you higher tax expenses whereas if you register as a business entity a legal one then you'll get taxed after you spend which is obviously a smaller amount which will give you a smaller tax expense so there are also practical reasons why you should register as a legal business entity such as you, it will allow you to get investors because investors will be unwilling to put money in your business if there's no separation between your personal assets and your business assets because then you can't really establish who owns what and who owns how much of the company. So it allows you to define ownership stakes and also formalize it under the law. And you are also able to trade shares of your company when you register as a corporation, for example. So let's get to the six types of business entities. So the first business entity I will talk about is the most basic one and the one a lot of people go with when they're starting out with starting a business and that is a sole proprietorship. So what this is is basically a unregistered business owned by one person. So you're not a legal business entity but you are conducting business activities and it's what a lot of self-employed people do. They don't register as a business entity but they still do business activities. This has a lot of disadvantages because there is no separation of your personal assets and your business assets when you are a sole proprietor and so your assets will be at risk which means that people can sue you and when they do sue you they can go after your personal assets like your house your cash in your personal bank account etc also it's hard to bring in investors and other partners into the business because you're not formalizing the ownership stakes of the business because there isn't a separation between business assets and personal assets. And again, you can't take advantage of the lower tax rates applied to legal business entities. So overall, there's a lot of disadvantages, but it is very common for self-employed people to have a sole proprietorship. And when you're starting out and aren't making any profits in your business, then this makes sense because to register as a business entity costs money and if you aren't making money then you should maybe wait a little before you do so. Next we have the general partnership. So this is similar to a sole proprietorship in that it is also an unregistered business entity. But the difference is a general partnership has multiple owners. So because it is unregistered, there is no separation of business assets and personal assets, which makes it even worse than a sole proprietorship because now that you have multiple owners of the business, it's hard to establish who owns what of the business and you can't formalize the ownership stakes because it's not a legal business entity. So again, your assets are at risk and it's hard to bring in 
investors and partners because the ownership stakes are not formalized. And you also can't take advantage of the lower tax rates that a registered business entity will grant you. Moving on, let's talk about registered legal business entities, which you should choose for your business because it grants you asset protection by separating your personal assets from your business assets. So your personal assets will not be at risk when you are conducting your business activities. Also, it will allow you to lower your business taxes because as a business entity, you can take advantage of the lower tax rates applied to corporations, LLCs, and partnerships. And you can also establish ownership stakes of your business, which will be attractive to investors and potential partners. First, we have the limited partnership. So I made a short explaining what this is, so I'm going to show you guys what a limited partnership is. A limited partnership, or LP, is a type of business entity formed by filing a certificate of limited partnership with the government. There are two types of partners in a limited partnership. There are general partners who are personally liable for the company, but have management authority, and there are limited partners who are not personally liable, but have no management authority. Because being personally liable puts your personal assets at risk, a lot of people create another business entity like a corporation or LLC to, to become the general partner to fully protect their assets. So you may wonder why would people form limited partnerships. It is very common to transfer wealth to the next generation because that way the older generation can manage the assets while the younger generation can own them without managing them. Also, it's a way to avoid the inheritance tax, also known as the death tax. And in addition to being a common structure for wealth transfer, a limited partnership is also a common structure for hedge funds and investment funds. And this is because it allows the manager to be the general partner and manage the partnership while the other investors who are not actively managing the investments can be limited partners which means they won't be personally liable but they won't have management authority which they don't need because they're putting their money with the investment manager to manage for them and the general partner even though he's personally liable usually what the investment manager does to avoid personal liability is create a LLC or a corporation to become the general partner which shields his personal assets from liability. Next we have the limited liability company or LLC and I did a few shorts explaining what a LLC is so I'm going to show you guys what's an LLC. A LLC is a type of business entity formed by filing articles of organization with the state. Different states have different laws for LLCs and different countries have different names for a similar type of business entity. Also, it's relatively new, so there is a lack of legal precedence for LLCs. That means that when you go into legal situations, you may not know what will happen because it simply hasn't happened before. So there are a few differences that distinguish LLCs from corporations. One is that it is able to avoid double taxation. So when corporations earn profits, it's charged a corporate tax. And if it wants to distribute the profits to shareholders through dividends, it's charged a dividend tax. So this is double taxation. However, for LLCs, when it earns profits, it can distribute it directly to members and the members can be taxed individually. This is called flow through taxation. Stick around for part two. If you haven't seen part one, check that out because this video is a continuation of that. Going off of where I left off, LLCs also have flexible allocation of profits and losses, unlike corporations. Let's say as an example, a corporation is divided into three equal shares. The profits and losses must be distributed equally among all shareholders because they all own the same amount of stock, and that is the law. This is not the case for a LLC. Let's say, as an example, the ownership of the LLC is divided into three equal parts. The owners of the LLC, called members, can distribute profits and losses however they want. They all have the same voting power because they own the same amount of the company, but for whatever reason, they can decide to distribute profits and losses unequally. Stay tuned for part three. If you haven't seen parts one and two, check that out because this video is a continuation of those two. 
So the last thing I want to talk about for LLCs is that it has a flexible management structure. So what do I mean by that? So for corporations, they have a formal structure that has to be adhered to legally. So they have shares that represent ownerships of the company, and it's held by shareholders who elect a board of directors who oversee the company, who elect officers who run the company. This is not the case for LLCs because it can be either member managed, which means all the members or owners of the LLC can manage it together, or manager managed, which means that members elect managers who could be members or could be non-members to manage it. So it's very flexible and this gives it a, another benefit. Next, we have the C corporation, which is the default type of corporation and the type of corporation that you usually read about when you read about corporations and big businesses and big companies because it is a very convenient structure if your business is very large. It allows for a large number of investors and it formalizes the business structure so that you can manage a large company. And I did a short explaining what's a C corporation, so check it out. A C corporation is a type of business entity very popular with large companies. It is formed by filing in articles of incorporation and it has a formal structure. The structure is that the company is divided into a bunch of shares and the shares are held by shareholders. These shareholders own the company and their ownership is based on how many shares they have. The shareholders elect a board of directors and the board is responsible for overseeing the company. The board is also responsible for appointing officers like CEOs and CFOs and the officers are responsible for running the company. Shareholders are not personally liable for the corporation, so if the corporation goes bankrupt and is in debt, the shareholders don't have to pay their personal assets to make up for the debt, and it is also governed by bylaws. Finally, we have the S Corporation, which is a special type of corporation which stands for small corporation available for small businesses and I did a short explaining what a S corporation is so I'm going to show you that to explain it to you. A S corporation is a business entity available for small corporations. It is very similar to a C corporation in that it's formed by an articles of incorporation filed with the government and it has the same structure with a company and its ownership divided into a series of shares held by shareholders who elect a board of directors who oversee the company and appoint officers who run the company. And like C corporations, the shareholders are not personally liable and it is also governed by bylaws agreed upon. So the added attributes to S corporations is that it has flow through taxation, which means you can avoid double taxation by being taxed directly through the shareholders instead of being charged a corporate tax. It also is required to have 100 shareholders or less and the shareholders must be citizens or residents. To answer the question which business entity you should choose for your business, it really depends on your business and there's no one size fits all. It depends on the size of your business, it depends on what kind of business you're doing, it depends on what stage you are in in your business journey. So for example, although I won't recommend a sole proprietorship or a general partnership for businesses when they're actually making money, it might be a convenient way to start out because you're not making money and it does take money to register as a legal business entity. Although you should remember that your personal assets and your business assets will not be legally separated when you're, you're starting out as a sole proprietorship or a general partnership and that could cause legal problems but when you're just starting out really it's usually okay. But when your business does start to make money and is growing and you need investors, you do need to register as a legal business entity. So obviously C corporations are the best for big businesses because it allows for a large number of investors and it also allows for a formalized business structure which is useful for governing a big corporation. When it comes to small businesses, when you're deciding between a S corporation or an LLC, 
there is a trade-off and I did a short on this and I'll show you guys that right now. So there's no one size fits all. It really depends on the specifics of your business and what you're looking for, but we can go over the differences. So for a C corporation, in my opinion, I think this is best for big businesses because there are unlimited number of shares and no limits on the types of stock or shareholders and easy liquidity is really easy to buy and sell, but there are cons like double taxation and a fixed structure. S corporations and LLCs are better for small businesses. For S corporations, you have um, possible flow through tax treatment and straightforward liquidity, while LLCs, you have guaranteed flow through tax treatment and debt and flexible allocation of profits and flexible management structure, which S corporations do not have. But for LLCs, you have less liquidity and there's a lack of case law to predict legal situations, which doesn't affect S corporations. And there are other cons to S corporations. Once again, limited partnerships are great for wealth management types of businesses because it allows for a general partner or multiple general partners to manage the money. And it also allows for limited partners to have their money in the entity without needing to manage it. So this is why limited partnerships are very popular for wealth transfers and it is also very popular for hedge funds and investment funds. So thank you for watching. Like I said, there's no one size fits all. The type of business entity you choose should depend on the type of business you're doing and how big your business is and the stage you are in during your business journey. I hope this video gives you a better idea of the types of business entities available to you and it helps you decide which one is right for your business. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it enlightening. Thank you for watching once again. Make sure to subscribe for more business content and I'll see you guys in the next video.